Hi everyone, it's Michael, and I wanted to take a quick moment to showcase how I prepare my plants that will be shipped to friends. Now what we are looking at are various divisions from my existing collection. Over this way, we have a division of my Maxillaria tenifolia. Here we have a division of my Potinara Miki Kobayashi D, which was spotlighted in the Potinara experiment video, which I will link below. And over here, we have a keiki from number seven, my Dendrobium nobili to my kids, which was spotlighted in the Orchid Keikis number seven video. Now, what I wanted to showcase here is really how I prepare these before I ship them because that can make all the difference in how they fare, if they survive, if they get bacterial rot. So I have a pretty specific system that I use that I'm excited to tell you about today. Now, if you haven't already seen it, I will link the video where I relocate my entire orchid collection from Colorado to Los Angeles below. But to be perfectly honest, that process was very, very ill-informed and had a lot of consequences. Because I shipped so many plants wet, there was ample opportunity for bacterial rot to set in, and it has taken my orchid collection almost two years to recover from that terrible, terrible execution. So this is what I'm doing now. First things first, you unpot all of the plants and you allow them to thoroughly dry, which is precisely what you're observing here. Now this one is already dry because I literally just clipped it off of the mother plant. But what I did do is I went into the actual incision site and I applied a little bit of cinnamon to help the area dry. Again, you wanna minimize and mitigate the opportunity for bacterial rot to set in anywhere and open wounds are a great way to create real problems. So now we wait. Typically, I allow this process to take about 24 to 48 hours to ensure that everything has thoroughly dried out and that any open wounds or incisions have an opportunity to close. While we wait, let's take a moment to discuss these root systems. For the Maxillaria tenifolia, it is likely to have a very seamless transition because this entire plant was already growing bare root outside of the container. It was a simple matter of clipping the rhizome at the appropriate spot, and now we just wait for it to dry. In the instance of the Potinara, this one was being grown in water culture. So what I did was remove it from the container and then I removed any dead or decaying debris. So I removed a rotting pseudobulb and some dead roots. Now for the Dendrobium nobili, the key distinction is this one is really, really attached to its potting medium. And it is imperative that you do not wrestle away any potting medium that does not wanna be released by the roots. Because the last thing you wanna do before stressing out this plant and shipping it is wildly alter or damage the root system. As you can see, this plant was being grown semi-hydroponically. So what I did was unpot the plant, I gently nudged the excess LECA to ensure it released, and then I'm just allowing it to hold on to that potting medium. It is totally fine, it's not going to hurt the plant, just so long as you allow it to adequately dry. I find that this approach is very effective for plants that are grown semi-hydroponically, in classic bark medium, or even with lava rock. Now I do wanna take a moment to highlight that there are exceptions to this rule. Myrostrepia cuprea, for example. This is not being shipped, but I do wanna highlight the fact that this is a high humidity orchid. When it is bare root, it needs a minimum of 75% humidity. So plants like this are sometimes shipped in Ziploc bags or something that can sustain ambient humidity. But I do not grow a lot of this type of plant, so it is the exception and not the rule in my personal grow environment. All right, my friends, we are back. It's 24 hours later, and as you can see, the root systems have all successfully dried. You can tell because the roots are no longer that deep shade of green or gray. They are white, which really indicate that they have adequately dried. So now we begin the process of individually packing each orchid. Now this step isn't absolutely essential, but what I like about it is it allows the recipient to see exactly how many orchids are in the container, but also it gives the plants an added layer of protection. Think about it, if you just have the plants sitting willy-nilly in the box and somebody uses a box cutter, they may very well end up cutting the rhizome or the plant itself, so it's just nice to have the added layer of protection. And to do that, I'm going to use these cut up shopping bags. Now you can get wrapping paper specifically for shipping, but I have these and I don't wanna be wasteful, so I'm just gonna use them. So now let's begin the process of packing the plants. So I have my little cut up bag here, and I'm gonna take the plant and essentially create a little triangle that it can live inside of. So I'm gonna place it towards the corner edge. I'm gonna flip the lip up to create just like a little blanket cover for it. And then I am going to fold and roll like so. So now we have our little orchid burrito, bouquet, whatever you wanna call it. But you can see that there's plenty of excess paper at the end. And what I'm gonna do is fold that over. So I'm gonna identify exactly where the top of the plant is. And I'm gonna mark that by just bending the paper a little bit so I have a visual indicator. 
And then I'm gonna fold the paper exactly at that point and just kind of bend in the excess. Kind of looks like a little piece of pizza, doesn't it? And I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm going to seal that. And there you have it. So I've got one down, I've got two more to go. So I'm gonna get these wrapped up and then we'll come back. So here they are, here are my three bundles of joy. They are ready and prepped to be shipped. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna reach for this large flat rate box from USPS. When it comes to shipping, I think that it's different for everyone and it depends on where you are. So I always just opt for the service that I find is the most reliable and the most expedient because you really wanna minimize how long these plants are in transit. They don't like it. They're resilient and they're hardy, but if they had their way, they would be out and about and breathing. They're epiphytes. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and get these packed up. Now, again, being a hoarder and keeping things that I think I can use, I have some of this nice little, I don't know what even to call it, confetti, funfetti, but I'm gonna put a base layer at the bottom of the box to just kind of give them a nice soft little nest. I'm just gonna place them right on in. This process used to take me so long, but I've gotten so good at it. Um, and then once they're all placed, I'm gonna do a nice little layer of a little more. All right, my friends, so if I take you in, you can see that they're nicely situated. I'm gonna find a little bit more packing because I just wanna make sure that they're fully nestled in there. And then I'm gonna get this sealed up and shipped off to my friend, Nicole. I hope she loves her new orchids. But this is just a nice little overview and snapshot of how I approach shipping. And with that, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much as always for choosing to spend your time with me. If you have any questions, concerns, or feedback, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. Be sure to support one another in the comment section because I'm so seldom available to do so. Don't forget to click subscribe and have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye friends.